All right, Township Committee meeting, September 27th, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access. Normally held at the Delanco Municipal Building, 770 Cooper Town Road in Delanco. Uh, roll call, please, Mrs. Martin. Mr. Brown. I am here. Okay. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. And Mr. Templeton. I am here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schwab has, uh, is unable to attend tonight. Uh, and let's see, Mr. Fox is not here. Mr. Heinhold is not here. Mrs. Lohr, we're hoping for. Uh, she'll be able to get online. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk, is here. Mr. Fenimore, are you out there to Superintendent Public Works? No, uh, he's not there. And Chief, uh, Chief DeSano is here. All right, flag salute, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, America, and to, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, under God, under God indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Hello? Hey, Mrs. Martin. Oh, there you are. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I hear you. Okay. Um, I think what it was is that uh, Dan, our IT guy, installed a um, new device on my computer at work, and it's not interfacing remotely with, um, well, I try to do a meeting remotely, so I, I logged out of the <clears throat> work computer, so, and it's working. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Lord, do you want to pick up uh, the proceedings? We're at the uh, Sunshine Statement. Sure. And please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. <clears throat> and this meeting is via a Zoom uh, remote meeting platform. The um, Advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic email, uh, at least uh, those that are received no later than six hours prior to the commen 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 commencement of the public meeting. Start time will be entered into the record and public comments submitted um, before the re public meeting deadline will be read aloud. Um, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option, or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform, chat through the chat option. Um, comments or questions submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public will be read. The Zoom chat function will be available when the meeting is open to the public for comments and questions and will otherwise be disabled during the meeting. This is new, I wanted uh, to read this in full because this is a new procedure that we're using because the chat function is being used um, for extraneous comments back and forth between members of the public participating. And it's hard to glean out what's meant for township committee and what is just people chatting back and forth. So when the meeting is open to the public, the chat function will be enabled. And that's when comments and questions should be made. And then when the public, is, the public session is closed to the public, the chat function will be disabled. And the agenda for this meeting is available on the Delanco Township website, uh, delancotownship.com. Thank you. All right, uh, first item on the agenda is the um, US Route 130 Delaware River Corridor Plan Endorsement Assessment Report. Uh, before we get to the public, the required public hearing on this document, uh, uh, this process started, uh, has actually started a couple of years ago and uh, uh, this township committee uh, received a request to uh, provide some, some input uh, back in December and January, and we completed that, that portion of, uh, uh, of our input there. And then we started working on the, uh, this, this larger document that uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Stanley Kindness of the Bridge Commission uh, has uh, been painfully working on for quite some time. And this involves uh, uh, 
our Delanco and uh, 11 of our neighboring towns along the, uh, the riverfront from Palmyra on up to uh, Florence. And uh, so anyway, I'm gonna uh, pass it on to Mr. Stanley Kynes because he's got the, the, the overall view of this and how this fits in and what uh, someone on this process. And uh, this is one of the milestones uh, in this process. Um, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Stanley Kynes to explain that and why this is important and uh, what went into this document uh, so far. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor, appreciate your time. The, the state has developed the plan endorsement process basically as a way to reward municipalities for their good planning and being consistent with the state planning goals. So towns that are consistent with the state planning goals and are doing what they should do as far as planning with master plans, redevelopment plans, master plan re-examinations, when a town is doing a good job, the state recognizes that and gives towns what they call plan endorsement. They endorse the town's plan. And that first started <laughs> in Burlington County in 1999. The county assisted the 12 municipalities putting together a region-wide plan, which was adopted by the state and allowed the municipalities to receive planning expertise, technical assistance, and also grant assistance. Some of the assistance that the states got were came in the form of planning for the river line when the uh, turnpike interchange at Route 130 was constructed. Uh, one of the success stories during that time was the Willingboro Town Center. Probably couldn't have been developed the way it was without a state help with assistance and also the county's assistance. So plan endorsement lasts for 10 years. So in 2009, the county helped the municipalities go through a very rigorous re re-examination and that gave the 12 towns another 10 years of receiving plan endorsement. So that plan endorsement expired in 2019. So again, the, the county was here to help the municipalities get ready. The first step in the plan was to have a kickoff meeting, which we had literally two days before the state and county shut down their offices for COVID. So the mayor, um, was present for that meeting and that was the last time I saw a lot of people in person. But that was just the first step to have the kickoff meeting. Not only does the State Planning Commission participate, but so does the NJDOT, the uh, Department of Environmental Protection, the Department of Com Community Affairs, and other state agencies. They collaborate to work through this process and the county has always been here to help. Our process is very unique in the fact that 12 municipalities are participating together on a regional plan. Typically just one municipality here or there submits a plan, but we thought it was important since there's 12 municipalities along the Route 130 corridor that kind of work together and are so close to each other. The Lanco is intertwined with what goes on in Beverly, Edgewater Park, Riverside, Del Rand. So we thought it made sense for the 12 municipalities along Route 130 to participate and work together. And the county is here to offer assistance. Again, we hosted that kickoff meeting. The next step was for municipalities to develop a what's called a municipal self-assessment. And we worked with the state and said, look, instead of having 12 individual municipal self-assessments, the county would put together a region-wide self-assessment for the entire region and just ask the municipalities to fill in a couple of spots here or there where you know your town better than we do. So that was the municipal questionnaire. We wanted the municipalities to fill in that information that the county doesn't know as well as, as the municipalities. So here we are, we had the kickoff meeting, which was step one. The second step was to create that advisory committee that uh, met a few times to go over the self-assessment. Now we had this self-assessment report, which has to be adopted by the governing body by resolution. And basically what that self-assessment states is, this is where the township is in their planning endeavors. What redevelopment plans do they have? When was the last time their master plan was re-examined? Do they have an open space plan? Are they looking at flooding, sustainability, resiliency? What are the goals of the township? And also the needs, what, what does the township need help with? What do they see may be some obstacles in the future? 
once this is adopted and submitted to the state, the state will, will do their, what, what they call a opportunities and constraint assessment, where they see where they can help and work with the municipalities. Next step is the community visioning process. And again, the county is going to help the municipalities to facilitate those visioning processes. Maybe to have a couple of municipalities get together as a group and find out what the re really the vision for their region is. So we will again help the municipalities facilitate those meetings. Basically what we wanna to get to is something called plan endorsement. And when, once we, we get there, it's kind of an agreement where the towns are set up to meet certain st planning steps. And as they meet those planning steps, the state and the county will be there to help them through by prov pro providing planning assistance and technical assistance. And what's also important, and I wanted to um, note, just recently, Willingboro Township won or received a grant award from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and they scored higher on that application because they have plan endorsement. We were also able to help Burlington Township facilitate a meeting with DOT about traffic on Route 130 in their warehouse district. So the help that you get from the state and the county is real. And I think it'll be a stronger case having the region-wide plan with the towns working together. Some of the complaints that some of the townships have made to the state is that our voice isn't heard in South Jersey. All the money goes up to North Jersey. Well, the hope is when 12 towns get together and 12 towns are doing good planning, that there'll be more attention and more resources brought to South Jersey and Burlington County. Uh, just to add, uh, uh, I've been working on this with Mrs. Martin and uh, going through the, uh, the self-assessment report, the large document uh, that includes all 12 uh, communities and so forth. And uh, we've been going through it over the last several months, actually, and bouncing revisions and updates and changes, uh, and just trying to bring this up to a, as current a snapshot as possible. And uh, uh, the, the troubling part, things, uh, so many things are happening here in, in Delanco with new construction or uh, proposed or pending construction that, you know, uh, what was... Uh, you know, planned or what was, well, we think this might happen back in uh, April or May is now, you know, actually going to occur in, in some other places. So um, this document's been quite fluid and uh, uh, as uh, it's, I think going forward as we, as we learn, uh, as other things happen, we can update this and continually update it. But I would like to, uh, to mention the, uh, the citizens advisory group that, uh, that helped with this and really added some some really sharp and and uh, uh, some great comments. Uh, uh, Marissa Karamanugian, uh, Linda Gaffney, uh, Peter Fritz, uh, Tom Finan, uh, Dan Martin, and uh, Chris Kloss. Uh, we had two uh, virtual meetings uh, with them, and uh, they forwarded uh, their comments and things that they saw from their perspective, and uh, I think really added to the depth of what we what we're submitting here. So. Um, does anyone on the committee have a, a comment before we open up to the public or uh, uh, Tom, do you have any other comments to add there or, or, uh, or any questions from the committee for Mr. Sankinas? I'm available to answer any questions. Um, just real quick, just so I understand the, the scoring um, that you mentioned that uh, Willingboro and Burlington scored higher because of your endorsement. That means what, like when they're assessing grant applications or funding requests? Correct, so uh, the State Planning Commission right now is working with their sister agencies in uh, the state. And with, with, what they're trying to do is on certain grant applications to give preference or difference to towns that have plan endorsement. So for example, on that New, New Jersey EDA grant that Willingboro submitted, if, if they're scoring competitive grants, maybe from one to 100, maybe a town that checks the box 
and says, I'm a plan endorsed community, maybe they get an extra five or 10 points on their application. So it's, it's, it's not a guarantee that they're going to get an application, but it's, it's a leg up when scoring applications against other towns. And then I guess the follow up is what percentage of New Jersey towns aren't like don't bother to follow this process? Well, right, right now, um, there's about 60 of the 565 municipalities. So about 10% of the municipalities are currently going through the process. The 12 municipalities along the river line, the Route 130 corridor, are the only 12 municipalities in Burlington County's 40 counties that are going through this process. Thank you. I have a comment. I do. I, I uh, actually reviewed the document and um, I was quite impressed with the, um, with the document as a whole. It was really extensive, but I did enjoy reading the different municipalities and their plans. And I was um, um, really impressed with the Lanco's update. It was a nice job. That subcommittee did a great job. And thank you, uh, Kitty, too, for working with them. I have a comment. Can everybody hear me? OK. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, very, very uh, in-depth document. Pretty much explains everything that's been going on. I do have a problem with one of the uh, paragraphs. Um, in the beginning, under equity, number three, equity, uh, might be hard to find because it, it was hard for me to find it a second time, but I found uh, quite a subjective statement in there that uh, I find offense with because I was part of this plan and it reads traffic, truck traffic and noise have been, have created adverse impacts on the Edgewater Park residents next door, not fully considered during regional planning at inception. I beg to differ with that because I was part of that with the county and uh, we did consider truck traffic and we did consider it with a park neighbors. And, you know, you're talking about a few that live within a mile of Route 130. So we did talk about the truck traffic and plan that it be uh, directed out of town or the county then did that uh, bypass on Creek Road. So I don't know if we have to approve this document or let this be part of history, but uh, I, I don't agree with that. But I agree with everything else in there. It was a great job by everybody, but uh, we, we did consider all of that in the redevelopment zone. Good point, good point, John. And uh, uh, I, I, that, was, that was a comment that I made and I felt that it was important because uh, we have gotten complaints and uh, having an industrial zone up against uh, a residential uh, neighborhood is going to cause some issues. And 20 years ago, um, you know, it's what this was was a was a look at. Okay, this this is this is where we are today, and this is how it, it got to this point. And, and you know, maybe a little uh, you know hindsight, and you know, you you, you deal with. You know, at, at the time you make any decision, you deal with the hand you're dealt with and as much clarity in the fuzzy crystal ball as you can. And, you know, whether it's 20 years ago or, or making a decision tonight or tomorrow. So, um, but Mike, I that's that, your opinion. That was your opinion that it has. No, no that, that's, a fact. that's a fact. We've gotten complaints, the truck traffic through any else in the document. I didn't see opinions about the affordable housing, about the uh, what to do with recreational spaces. I didn't see where anybody else said, you know, what they're feeling. This is a subjective comment in this planning document. And I think it should be reworded um, to delete that. Thank you. Any other comments? We'll, uh... Well, I wanted to know, um... How did I didn't know that we received complaints from Edgewater Park regarding truck traffic? I, I I wasn't made aware of any complaints. Well, that's 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 been a fact. All the truck traffic coming by their elementary school that's that's been an issue for some time. Huh? I never see. I've never seen the complaints. Never seen them. Well, it's obvious. 
But Mike, that was industrial zoning. Yeah. Before you got here, before I got here, oh, probably. No. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 no. That's 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 true. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, we're looking at things. We we made comments about the affordable housing and how. But our forefathers in this town created that industrial zone out there, knowing that it was going to be away from the residential housing. Isn't that isn't that proper zoning to do within a community? Well, it's it was it was away from the residential housing in Delanco. But so, the planning board looked at this and approved it, and you know the setbacks and buffers and all that was something to learn from experience. I mean, it's uh, to learn from experience, and we, we tried to uh, mitigate some of the noise from the current businesses that are out there, and uh, that's that's been something we've been discussing uh, or discussed much earlier this year and last year. So uh, it's it's a valid point. So, any other comments from, uh, let's see, Burton? As far as the uh, trucking and the commercial, uh, the uh, complaints from uh, Edgewater Park, there are a few residents up there that live on, I guess, the Lanco Coopertown Road that, uh, have expressed concern about the uh, trucks that do go along the front there. Uh, and there's added trucking that will be coming through there, uh, mainly, I guess, from uh, Edgewater Park with their warehouses that are being developed right there uh, at that intersection. Uh, and as far as our traffic, although we have a lot of traffic that has been uh, truck traffic that goes over to uh, Creek Road uh, off of, uh, I guess, Industrial Way. A lot of that traffic, truck traffic, ends up going uh, down to Lanco Cooper Town Road. So, uh, but again, that, that's something that uh, those residents, uh, you know, had they purchased their homes prior or have lived there for many years. Uh, didn't experience in the beginning, but as uh, we in Delanco and Edgewater Park have uh, our industrial areas or commercial areas, uh, you know, I guess life is changing. Uh, and as far as the document is concerned, it's just a matter of uh, having awareness. You know, uh, maybe it's a flag out there that, hey, we still need to not even though in Delanco, we put our industrial area there away from our, our housing, uh, Edgewater Park still has housing in that area. And if we're dealing with 12 communities uh, with this document, uh, it's probably this, something that everyone should be aware of that what we do affects our neighboring towns. And there's a chain reaction there. Uh, so to note having truck traffic or a, uh, a different type of traffic, whether it's housing or uh, residential area or commercial where we're dealing with trucks, uh, the, the traffic studies need to have, uh, I guess, a, a, a closer look on how it, impact, it impacts uh, the neighboring communities. Uh, so whether uh, the document needs to uh, the wording needs to be changed in that uh, paragraph uh, that it was looked at. And with Creek Road, we did uh, try and get most of our uh, traffic to go that, that way. Life things happen and uh, things have changed. So, uh, you know, it was noted, you know, it should probably be noted that we, ha we had looked at it, but again, there were circumstances that things changed and we have additional traffic going down Wait, through a residential area. Uh, that would be my comment on that. And as far as the document itself, again, it's you know what we do in Delanco uh, has an impact on Edgewater Park, Riverside, Beverly, uh, and the surrounding communities. As what they do in their communities has an impact on our little town. You know what Riverside does. Uh, you know probably puts, we'll end up putting more traffic across the uh, Delanco Riverside Bridge and down our Burlington Avenue. Uh, and we'll have an impact there, you know, but that should, those things should be considered on 
I guess, quality of life uh, for the residents. Thank you. Sure. Well put, thank you. I'm gonna open up the, this public hearing uh, on this, uh, on this uh, plan endorsement assessment report. Um, hearing is now open to the public for comment on this, uh, uh, this document alone. And uh, are there any comments? Uh, if there are, uh, state your name, address. Um, and uh, if you've got a question for any one of us or uh, Mr. Stanikinas on, on this process, uh, you're welcome to hear it, please. Any comments on this document or this, uh, this process? Any chat comments or correspondence, Mrs. Lord? You're muted. muted. You're muted, Janice. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So Aaron ha has uh, enabled the chat function. So this is the time that anyone has any comments or questions on the um, Route 130 Delaware River Corridor Plan Endorsement Assessment Report. Um, they should uh, raise their hand or you know what, uh, say their name and address or put their comment or question into the chat function that is now available. And I have nothing, there is nothing at this time in the chat function. Thank you. Well, hearing uh, no comments, I don't see any hands raised. I don't, uh, we don't have any comments in the chat. This uh, hearing is now closed to the public on the Route 130 Delaware River Corridor Plan Endorsement Assessment Report. Um, Tom, regarding Mr. Brown's comments uh, is, uh, You've said several times in our in our discussions over the last couple of months that we could always continually add or amend or, or uh, are, we're not locked in to the black and white of this at this time. Uh, or how do we treat that? Correct. Um, I, yeah, I did want to um, emphasize that this is a living document. For example, the uh, 2020 census has just come out. So one of the things that we're hoping for is once uh, we get those final uh, census numbers to update some of the uh, population charts and fill that in. So that, that's things that we'll always be updating to keep this plan current. So I would think if some of the language in the questionnaire is tweaked a little bit, uh, as far as the equity paragraph that uh, Mr. Brown mentioned, um, that doesn't seem substantive where I would recommend voting the um, document down, you know, perhaps still voting in the affirmative with knowing that, you know, a few changes here and there could be made. And it really goes to the heart of the uh, regional impact. Uh, the county has studied the Route 130 corridor many times. As recently as 2018, we put together a river route, Route 130 corridor study to look at traffic along Route 130. And there has been some uh, suggested improvements, putting a traffic uh, circle in Edgewater Park on Delanco Road and Bridgeboro was a recommendation. The funding's not there, but as we continue to talk and continue to study the corridor, hopefully together with the county, state, and the municipalities, we'll be able to find appropriate improvements to address everyone's needs. But with, with this, if we approve this document as is, the township is pretty much uh, stating that, okay, we made an error, so come on and get us. You know, it's a liability. I think you just delete, uh, for me to vote on approval, I would just want that deleted and get rid of the opinion. And, and uh, I don't think it needs to be in there. If I'm a developer and I'm coming in, which we do have warehousing coming in and there's warehousing coming in at Edgewater 
And, uh, you know, and, and Delanco says, oh, hey, we didn't take that into consideration 20 years ago. I, I just don't, A, I don't agree with it, and B, I just worry about what uh, sort of Pandora's box that opens with um, the other traffic. And, I mean, you know, Edgewater Park is going to have extreme truck traffic, you know, up their end uh, off of Route 130. Uh, there's nothing we can do as their neighboring town. That That is their warehouse and their trucking issue. And, um, well, you know, I don't need to get into that, but I just am not comfortable with closing a document out because I know how it is. It stays, it's buried, I'm gone, this thing comes back to haunt us. Um, somebody's saying, well, who the heck did that, you know, 20 years ago? I've taken years and years, I've seen people take crack shots at the pilot programs um, I don't, I don't want to hear it with traffic, truck traffic issues, that that I-2 zone was not carefully thought out. The planning board had traffic studies. The county had traffic studies. These are all professionals that we pay handsomely and uh, that were thoroughly thought out. So it wasn't just me saying, hey, you know, let's uh, build uh, some industrial there. Important. Don't work like that in this country. You need a lot of people, a lot of cooks in the kitchen to make that soup. So is there a way to, if we approved, are you looking for a vote on this tonight? Like some resolution or ordinance? Yeah, it's on the agenda, John. Yeah, I saw that. Once you approve it, that's that's it. Well, that, actually this portion that that uh, verbiage that you mentioned was in the document that we, you agreed, read and agreed to last January. So uh, um, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I, I've got no no problem of adding something that this was considered 20 years ago, and this is something that's that's been an outcome of it. I mean, that's just that's just realizing, thing, you know, what's happened over 20 years. It is a, it is an issue. I don't think it's opinion; it's fact. So, but I, you know, th this is a, uh, this is an important process. It's it's one item. It's. Uh, you know, nearly 200 pages of information, and uh, um, it's it's not uh, it's it's an important it's one of many many uh, important fact issues as far as development uh, that we've uh, tried to address in this, and particularly with the advisory committee, really pointed out uh, you know the traffic issues was probably the number one it one one item that was. Uh, uh, really stressed and a lot of lot of um, added information went in there. So uh, I mean that's just facing up to what reality is. And it's not it's not sharpshooting or being critical. That's just time and and getting experience. You know um, things that uh, this committee's done. You know a, a couple of years ago we've got uh, a discussion item on a park ordinance that we did uh, several years ago. In hindsight. You wonder why we did it that way, you know, because we're, we're we got to do a little cleanup on it. At the time, it seemed like it made sense. So you know, you're always uh, going back and reviewing things. If you don't acknowledge that you could do something better, then you're kind of um, you know you're not uh, we're not doing a good job here. So no, I'm not saying, I'm not to... saying that this subcommittee and yourself didn't do a good job. There's quite a bit of information on this document. And I'm very compassionate about the document because when I started in 1999, I was involved with the county freeholders and the whole river route and the five million dollar revolving loan, and the train and the train. Uh, you know, we fought hard to do all this, and now it seems people aren't happy. It's going the other way. They don't like the warehousing. They don't like the affordable housing. They don't like the train. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but with progress comes population and uh all the criticism that sisters it so well, that, and, that, and that's, that's that's what this document is trying to point out to the to, to you know whatever at the state level hey you know you create these regional plans to encourage development whether it's uh, through tax incentives or or whatever uh, eda funding and things like that but what was lacking on the other end was all the infrastructure catch-up i mean look at all the the the, the roadways are choked. Uh, yeah, and, and we, you know, you know, it takes a couple of years for us to do a road. It takes a decade for something as significant as a turnpike interchange. But it's just to highlight, hey, you know, when you do these things, 
uh, you know, look at all the things that we're trying to, you know, catch up on them with the sidewalks out to the I2 zone uh, uh, and, and things that completely uh, are unexpected, like a, a, a business that has a, uh, a large workforce where what was planned out there was um, <laughs> warehousing that has minimal on-site uh, uh, employees, you know, the, maybe two or three dozen. And now you've got a business out there that's got uh, 250, 300 employees. Um, well, Mike, so we had, you know, Dietz and Watson came in and was very, uh, you know, everybody wanted Dietz and Watson. They had employees that was not just warehousing. They had ships going there and, you know, it was a good uh, township the, the, business the site was until the unfortunate fire. That Dietz built that so to, to handle that. Okay. Or less they had We have that many employees out there. Um, well, that's, that's what was causing the spillover with the trucking that uh, uh, Chief DeSanto has been deal dealing with because the employee parking knocked out the tr what was dedicated truck parking. And so the truck spilled over onto Enterprise. That's a lot of that is Carvana. Carvana is really overwhelmed out there. But um, I know, I think a couple of years ago, Mark Remza came and presented the plan that the county was working on for the Route 130 corridor regarding the jug handle to try and eliminate some of the congestion there. And I asked him seriously, like, how long is this going to take? And will Delanco see any relief? And he said it was going to take at least eight years for our portion of it. They were going to work in Burlington and down in that area and do some um, some adjustments for them, but we were kind of like low on the totem pole. So um, I think once the, the state, because it is a state issue, once the state realizes that that traffic needs to be dealt with, that that will help us a great deal. But if we have truck traffic, if Edward Park's complaining about our truck traffic, which I only know of one resident that did that recently. What are they? What about what their truck traffic's going to bring right near that school and that residential section? So, I kind of think John's right that I don't know that it's significant to be in there. I don't know what significance it does to for us to endorse it. I, I don't understand that. I think he's right. It just deleted. Just delete that statement. Kate? Yeah. If, if we delete the, the statement from there uh, and clean that paragraph up, but somewhere in there, we need to, Mr. Claus had put together a beautiful report, but in this report that's going to go to the state and the folks up there in transportation, they need to be aware the impact of trucking especially out by the uh, intersection out by Holiday Lakes. Uh, that jug handle there and the, uh, the problems or the issues that occur there every day, a number of times a day. Uh, that well, that's what I was talking about, Fern. That's what I was talking about, that when Mark Remza came in a couple of years ago, that was the whole plan was to redo that jug handle down the road so that it wouldn't be the congested area it is. And right. eliminate. And they, they haven't been able to do it in this document. Whoever reads it as people change and personnel change, somewhere in there, trucking has to be part of the uh, part of the equation. Uh, and we just need to be able to communicate that. And to to John's point, you know, having the truck go twenty years ago, ten years ago. Uh, when Creek Road got realigned to handle some of that trucking, okay, uh, it's it's still didn't alleviate the issue that we have out there on 130. Uh, again, yeah. trying to take care of the issue uh, in town and alleviate some of, of that traffic. But as we continue to grow uh, industrial-wise and uh, 
with warehouses and, and trucking, it, it's still an issue. And somewhere in the document, and again, give John and uh, the folks back then credit for doing the Creek Road piece. And so maybe this piece needs, uh, this comment needs to come out of that statement or that uh, number three paragraph, but somewhere in there, add another paragraph, you know, blow it up, you know, in bold letters, whatever, that this is still an issue. And uh, what goes on in the surrounding communities impacts the Lanco and we impact those communities. Uh, and again, back to that Route 130 out there, uh, out by Holiday Lakes. Uh, so we'll have that jug handle, and then we have the one up there at Beverly Road or Beverly Rancocas Road. You know that impact there is going to even be greater. Uh, well, that that is in this document, Fern. The uh, the the Creek Road jug handle and the uh, the lack of jug handle at Cramps Liquors, Delanco Road. Right. That is also that's in this yeah. document. You know they did comment on that and. Uh, I have seen the plans for uh, the Creek Road jug handle to widen that uh, on ramp onto the jug handle. But Mark Remsen did say uh, eight years and possibly eight years. Yep. 10 years to, to get it done. Mm -hmm. So, and we're uh, probably still another 10 years away now. Yeah. Even though it needs to be done now. Right. Uh, let's, uh, let's move forward on this. Um, does, uh, let's see, Chris, do you have a, any, any opinion on, on John's comment there uh, regarding that, that statement on, uh, on yeah, consideration I do. of noise impacts to a neighboring community? I, I do. I feel like we're kind of getting lost in the weeds right now that I, I understand John and Kate and everyone's concerns having been part of this process for so many years before I even knew Delanco existed, right? But bottom line is this document has the potential to be a vehicle for improvement down the road. And part of that means that, you know, yes, you guys considered at the time what, what truck potential impacts are, but now we're living the reality of it as is Edgewater Park. And once all those high rises go up in Riverside, we'll have that to deal with. Like you can consider it, but still make a, I don't want to say a bad choice because if you're, if, it doesn't mean that it was bad. It just didn't come to fruition quite the way that everyone hoped. So I, I think that it goes without saying that our, these 12 towns impact each other. You know, when we make a decision, it impacts others. And when they make, make a decision, it impacts us. So this is just more proof. And if it helps Edgewater Park and if it helps us one day, get the safe streets to transit grant money because we're acknowledging now that there's a big problem with our traffic patterns. I don't see the harm in moving forward knowing that this is, as Tom had said, a, a living document that we can adjust and um, um, I, I feel like we're, we should move forward. So. Uh, any last comments? All you got to do is take out not fully considered during regional planning at inception. You can leave everything else in there. Truck traffic and uh, noise have created adverse impacts on the Edgewood Park residents, period. All right, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay, we don't have to put opinions in there. And, um, you know, but yeah, if you want to address increased truck traffic and send that to the state, of course, that will still be in here. But just to remove that not fully considered during regional planning, because um, to, right. that, there was a lot of work put into a lot. Is everyone so I would okay with that? We just remove those words. Everyone okay with that as is? I am. Just remove those few words that John asked us to remove. All right. Yeah, Thanks. me too. All right, uh, resolution 2021-119, statement of intent to pursue a plan endorsement and authorization to submit the municipal self-assessment report to the Office of Smart Growth uh, with the, I don't know, it's not an amendment, with the edit, edit, edit to the document. 
uh, as discussed. Uh, U.S. Route 130 River Corridor Plan Enforcement Assessment Report. Is that motion, please? So moved. And sec second. Motion by Mr. Lett. Uh, there was an echo there. Who said was a second? I hey. said it first. Oh, I thought I did. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes, as amended. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Yes, as amended. Oh. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olet. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. And uh, thank you to Mr. Stanley Kindness. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. Thank you to the advisory committee. And uh, the last couple months, and as uh, Tom said, there's a couple more steps to go uh, towards uh, the conclusion of this. But good job by all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. You can go home now. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, public comment statement. Purpose of the public comment session is to allow residents to share information and reviews with the Delanco Township Committee. So the committee may be hearing the information for the first time. It is not always possible to have issues, questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, let's see, report of advanced remote meeting comments, questions. The section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either via electronic email or written letters required by NJAC 5-39-1 S. Twitter. Members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting and one or both, uh, one or both of the public comment sessions. The meeting's now open to the public uh, for comments and questions. This is session one. Any comments in the chat or any advance uh, notices, Mrs. Lord? For the record, there were no advance comments submitted um, for this meeting. Right now, there are no comments in the chat. If anyone wants to make any comments or question live, please unmute, state your name and address. Hearing and seeing no comments from the uh, public on the session one. The comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports, uh, let's see. Mr. Schwab is absent tonight and uh, let's see, department heads. Uh, administration, I'll start with you, Mrs. Lohr. Anything? Um, the only thing again is that uh, there are changes. I've been participating in various um, webinars for the upcoming general election in November. The biggest change being that there will be early voting um, for nine days prior to the election um, in November. And Burlington County will have seven early voting sites. The closest one to Delanco is Willingboro Public Library meeting room over at the municipal uh, facility on Campbell Drive. Um, also to the vote by mail, Ballots have been mailed um, and people have the option right now to return them by mail, to take them to the county or to drop them off in one of the vote by mail uh, ballot drop boxes located throughout the county. Delanco does not have a uh, ballot drop box. We did not meet the population requirement and the closest ba uh, vote by mail ballot drop boxes are um, going to be uh, like Riverside, Edgewater Park. And also too, right now, uh, vote by mail ballots may not be taken on the election night to your polling place. They will not be accepted at the polls. And that's the status right now. But um, if there's any change with executive orders, I will, uh, bring that, I will bring that update to everyone's attention and post it on the website. And that's what I have for now, thank you. Janice, I have a question regarding the early voting part. Do we have that on our website as to exactly how it's going to take place that I can take a look at? Because I haven't, I haven't checked it out yet. Yes, we have uh, been working with Bev about the um, putting that on the count. Uh, we had the webinars, things are in place. We will be, uh, what we're going to do is just link to the county's website. So as okay. executive orders, um, may change things, adjust things, 
um, then it'll be the most current information. So um, Bev is working on linking uh, information to the county's website about early voting. Okay, great. That, Thank that you. Should, that should be up shortly. Okay. And early Thank vote. You. I believe the first day of early voting is uh, October twenty third. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Nothing else. That's it for now. I will have correspondence later. All right. Uh, let's see. Chief DeSanto. Yes, Mayor. Thank you. I just have a few items. Uh, one is I emailed, uh, I believe, late this morning, uh, an update on the alteration of their detention area for the police department. I provide you an updated schematic and an updated uh, estimated uh, costs for the project. I, we met with New Jersey DOC. They uh, reviewed our design. They didn't have the, an issue with the overall concept of design, but they just asked us to uh, make some suggestions and incorporate some items that design, which has been done. And so I'm waiting to get feedback from them. They've been provided to the new schematic. So just to keep you up to date, as I said in the email, we're not ready to go out to public bids. Uh, I want to get a affirmative uh, uh, confirmation from them in writing that uh, they're they're good with our design. Uh, the next item I want to talk about is um, Ms. Fitzpatrick had mentioned it, the parking on Creek Road. In communication with our Carvana, they uh, took on the project to uh, increase, expand their employee parking because they knew that the no stopping standing was coming on Creek Road. So I believe that uh, that's in the process or just about completed. Spoke to Mr. Brickley about the process or the progress of their end regarding their resolution uh, for the county commissioners regarding the uh, no stopping, no stop, no standing. And I uh, was advised it was on their agenda for last Tuesday but no anticipation of it failing, but passing. And he indicated um, he's estimating mid-October when there's uh, no stopping, stop, no stopping standing signs will go up. And then uh, enforcement and begin. As you can see, if anyone's taken a look down Enterprise Drive, it was pretty successful. And I and expect that Creek Road will you know, do the same. That once um, those signs are up, we can enforce and the word will get out. And um, if Carvana hasn't made the proper arrangements, uh, I'm sure they will once their employees get tickets. But I think they're trying to stay ahead of the game. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the alternate route program that you passed the resolution. It's uh, you know bared some potential fruit. We um, we have we have some uh, applicants uh, that fit that criteria for that program. Uh, we have currently two vacancies for the police department because we're going to have two uh, retirements. And before the end of the year, so um, that that is a, a good thing, and I thank the committee for giving me more resources. Uh, the pool of it, candidates, the interest of becoming police officer, unfortunately, is uh, dwindling, and as that occurring, it becomes more and more difficult to find quality people, uh, let alone you know quantity of people. And there's a uh, strong competition out there. We're not the only agency hiring. Uh, one of our applicants is a former applicant of Phoenix PD. They're down 500 officers out of a $3,000, 3,000 uh, man department or person department. So everybody's feeling this impact nationwide. And I bring this to your attention just to keep in mind that, um, you know, when it comes time to um, talk about contracts and salaries, you want to make sure that we're staying competitive uh, with the talents around us. Uh, just keep that in mind because this alternate route program um, does it, it's one way participation and that's why I encourage you to be involved with it because if we're not in the mix we're just going to be losing so it's a double-edged sword so just keep that in mind um, you know that recruitment and filling positions is becoming very difficult not only in this county not only in this state but nationwide and uh, that's that's all I got oh one other thing uh, Coopertown Road, I, I know that um, I'll take responsibility. I wasn't communicating uh, with the contractor as well as I should have been. Uh, communications have been 
have been uh, established thanks to um, so I think things have improved. That's my opinion. We had a long talk with them on Friday. Their job didn't occur because the, um, the things I was requiring, they couldn't meet. And so rather than you know force something and make it unsafe, they uh, shut it down and, and re regrouped and started back today with, with eight officers uh, on the project. So, and I, you know, they know what to expect safety wise. So I'm hoping that'll continue through the rest of the project. Sound on a message. They're gonna plan on doing striping. I don't know how much the weather's gonna affect them, but the striping of the paved road should occur tomorrow. And hopefully they're out of town tomorrow and we're done with them. Okay. Chief. Yes. Uh, question pertaining to striping as far as the crosswalks. Uh, at Edgewood? Uh, they're uh, only, they're the, the request for the entire road, county roads, Brownton Avenue, uh, all those roads have been submitted to Mr. Brickley. This company, this striping is only going to do what they paved. And that's from Mahali Road up to the intersection of Brownton Avenue, uh, which, you know, they, they took out their crosswalk there at Brownton and Cooper, and they're going to replace it. All those other crosswalks, I'll have to go through the county's, you know, maintenance or highway department, and I will remake that request again. So um, just anticipate that they're going to only do the one crosswalk. Um, well, I should say any crosswalk that they paved over, they're going to re put back in. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Township Committee comments. Mr. Brown, let's start off tonight. All right, good evening. Uh, I would like to comment uh, on some shade tree issues. And I see that we have our chairman uh, and our vice chairman here. And I want to know if they could chime in during my comments, Mr. Mayor, uh, if they have anything to say. Um, sure. Okay, I first want to talk about the incident at 3rd and Walnut Street. We discussed it at our shade tree meeting last week. Uh, we understand that there's a glitch in the hierarchy uh, that we are interested in correcting since um, I heard from you and Fern earlier in the day. And then by the time our shade tree expert got to the scene, the trees were falling down. So uh, there were too many hours that have gone by for a decision to be made. Um, so we want to correct that. And uh, in my speaking with Richard, uh, rather than change the ordinance, to state uh, who shall be called in this event. Uh, Richard feels that we should be able to do it within our commission under policy. So I'm going to go to the Shade Tree Commission uh, next month and really put forth, we have to put time into a policy manual so that we know uh, when these situations arise, what we're doing, okay? Um, because I think some of that could have been avoided. Uh, if we can't depend on Mr. Sevilla to drive from Robbins, uh, Robbinsville, um, you know, on very quickly, it's, uh, that's a good ride. So we are aware of the problem and uh, hopefully we can work on correcting that and get our housekeeping in order within the commission. And also um, we were asked uh, to look at 200 Ash Street as a commission and the trees on the property. Luckily, our shade tree expert beat us to it. Uh, Mr. Sevilla had walked the grounds uh, from the outside of the fence. He did state it was locked, uh, but he has determined that there's a few big mature trees behind the building on that very thin line between the property owners on uh, Poplar and uh, the back of the building. So uh, Chairman John Pagliai, uh, Paye, I'm sorry, that's a tough one, um, would like me to bring it up to the committee that we uh, ask engineering to please uh, work with us on those issues to uh, get involved in making some of those decisions. When it comes to demolishing the building, uh, do the trees automatically have to come down with it or is it possible uh, to save them? Is that, is that about it, John Paye? 
Uh, yes, John, that's correct. But uh, also uh, the other concern that Kevin had was uh, even if they could be saved, that if it was a problem during the demolition that they might be uh, compromised and then have to be removed. So um, it's probably wise for Kevin to uh, somehow get in there and and be able to look at the trees uh, up close and you know he could give us an expert uh, opinion about uh, whether the trees will be um, a problem during demolition and you know if so he would have recommendations to make. Well, John, let's try to schedule uh, Kevin to go in there when he's in town, which is, when does he do, he does a walkthrough on the town, the day of our meetings? I guess we'll have to coordinate that, but we can get maybe somebody to unlock the gate uh, so he can do a walkthrough. Yeah, that makes so sense. He, so he doesn't have to make two trips. Yeah, Public Works has the key and uh, police and fire also have the key. Okay. Um, we also, within our policy manual, uh, Bill Malevich, you're there, right? Do you, do you know if we have a personnel manual, I'm not personal, a policy manual for Shade Tree? No, I have one. Yeah, okay. I think we're going to have to uh, dig it up out of the archives or just start from scratch, but some of these rules and regs will fall under our commission and, um, you know, such as the fines and such uh, for removing trees and demolishing trees and um, perhaps maybe could put in that policy manual. Okay. And I have one other comment. Um, the curve, the, the curve at Burlington Avenue looks great. I can't believe I can visually see uh, somebody coming the opposite direction. I, I want to know, and I guess I'll direct this to Kate since she's on rec commission, rec and, you know, parks. Is there a landscaping plan uh, for that, there's one tree that I think should come out of there that would really open up the view. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. Um, and there's some shrubs that, uh, has anybody discussed it, Kate? Um, not really, because we're waiting for the property to be turned over to us. I believe we're uh, going to move those shrubs. They, they will be actually put against the neighbor's fence. So that'll even open it up more. Are you talking about the big tree in the back? No, it's a small ornamental tree toward the front of that property line. Okay. Um, yeah, no plan uh, has been worked out yet, but I think once we get the deed to the property, I gave Doug the information for the uh, county attorney. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll follow up with him. Since now okay. they finally have cleared it um, and took the equipment out. They were waiting for the land to settle. So. Um, I'll check with Doug on that, and then maybe I think um, I think if the committee agrees that we should uh, come up with a plan. But I know Rep would like to move those uh, shrubs against that fence, which would make sense because that would even open the view up more. Um, yes. Because they're blocking it. Um, yeah. So. Um, okay. But we do need a plan, and we will work on that. I think we should involve um, Scott Taylor. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, and that's all I have other than I, I went to uh, drive to the municipal building today and I couldn't. Is there, can we come in the back way uh, through uh, Perkins Lane and down or is that closed off too? Uh, well, I came in from Perkins this afternoon and that, that uh, the inbound side to town was open part of the way. Uh, uh, but anyway, it should be, as the chief said, should be wrapped up late tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah, it's, uh, they're doing a good job. It's very nice and smooth. Yeah. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Right. Thank you, John. Uh, two things, Chief, uh, on the curve, uh, the, the curve at Burlington there. Uh, I've heard people uh, some comments that uh, traffic might be moving a little faster now that people can see their way around the curve. Have you? Uh, observed anything like that or in your experience so far, even though it's only been a couple, two, three weeks now that the building's down? I mean, me personally, no. Uh, I've sat there when I worked patrol. I actually sat on uh, Burlington Avenue before the curve and, you know, the speeds weren't, I think, abnormal. 
It's okay, just good. adjusted yeah. speed limit around that curve. It's not an actual speed limit. Um, so, but I mean, I haven't noticed, and I know uh, officers have been sitting on Burlington Avenue prior, you know, between the bridge and the curve. But we'll, okay. we'll continue to you know, keep an eye on it, and um, we have the message board, and you know, we can always put that back out to uh, you know slow people down. Right. Uh, John, to follow up on the uh, uh, the trees and and, and Third Street, uh, when I walked it with uh, Mr. Fox and uh, Mr. Matalevich, uh, one of the things we kind of or we discussed and uh, uh, was on future or as that project uh, progresses, but on future projects, if we've got trees that are in the planning strip that's too narrow, um, what happened at Third and Walnut? was the new excavation for the for the new up-to-date you know current spec curbing requires a much deeper and wider you know the, the concrete forms and so forth and uh, you know whatever the contractor may have done or not done right as far as uh, the root cutting obviously the the larger forms and everything that was required for the new curbing um, probably contributed to this. And what we did going down the street uh, with similar narrower, narrower planning strips, if the existing curbing was still intact and in good serviceable condition to leave that in place and not touch it. Um, and the, the question or the, the point between that uh, Mr. Fox and Mr. Matalevich uh, needed to work out or should be worked out is is what time in that design process, the initial engineering or the final engineering, when that determination is made that, okay, these trees are, would be vulnerable if we try to go in there with the uh, uh, current curbing. Uh, and just if the curbing that's there is serviceable, what's there on Third Street is actually old uh, um, slates uh, that are set into the ground. Uh, actually on portions of both sides of the uh, Third Street that uh, whenever that was done, probably turn of the century. So um, that'd be something that uh, either in your policy manual or procedures and so forth, that shade tree, those determinations are made early on in a street project uh, in the future, if that's what you decide to do. Did I get that right, Bill? Yeah, yeah, well, we need to determine a course of action before they even go to bid. And I think the contractor and the engineer shared liability with that tree fall. I mean, going down 18, 24 inches on either side of a tree, that's you know, 20, 20 inches in diameter is just asking for trouble. It should have been foreseen. So could have easily been avoided. But as far as defining a point where a decision is made, okay, the curbing's good, we've got a narrow planting strip and a tree that could potentially be vulnerable if we do. Uh, that should be one of the first things that's done before they even draw up design documents. All right. So that, that mechaniz mechanism needs to, if that's the decision to say shade tree and that's what uh, can be worked out with engineering and, and we all buy off on that. That's the, the right thing to do. Um, Agreed. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, let's see, Ms. Fitzpatrick, comments? Okay, yes. Um, well, I did attend the uh, Office of Emergency Management meeting and there was really no new information there. Um, Terry seemed to feel that they have enough um, equipment right now and uh, there were very few people in attendance at that meeting. Uh, the history board, they're continuing to work on their interpretive signage and heritage uh, historic nominations. At their request, I submitted an email to administration and Harry to add to the demolition bid um, a salvage bricks or wood that could possibly be used for signage and or benches at 200 Ash Street. They held a special meeting that I was unable to attend to apply for a grant. And the grant that they were going to apply for was for signage um, for the Ridgeway Park. 
So when I got that email from Peter indicating that they wanted to move forward with a grant for that, I, I, uh, I advised them that number one, our bid has not been done yet to even include salvage. It's gonna be an alternate bid and that they were not in a position to apply for that grant because the township hasn't decided what we're gonna do with the property yet. And we don't know if it's gonna be a park and we don't know if we're gonna name it Ridgeway Park, that it was, um, you know, putting the cart ahead of the apples or what have you. So they are aware that they can't apply for that grant for Ridgeway Park. So I did tell them that and I advised Richard and Janice of the same thing. I sent them the email when I did that. Uh, Recreation finished up with their concerts um, and they're working on activities for community day. Uh, we're also going to be doing some replanning at West Avenue and Gateway Park with the help of Amber. Um, sewer Authority, we passed a resolution uh, for the executive director, Doug Weller, to sign all future TWAs. I wasn't sure what a TWA was, but it's the Treatment Works Approvals. So um, we did that and they're still waiting for our okay to move forward with Dolan. And it looks like we may be moving forward with Dolan tonight. Uh, DISA, I've attended two meetings since my last report. Uh, they had a great spring season. The eight U girls won the championship in their division. Opening day for soccer was September the 11th. Riverside has contributed $5,000 to DISA because they are joining with DISA. And I was very happy to hear that. Their fall feast, their spring fling will be held um, on Saturday, March 12th this year, one to four at the Willingboro FOP. The senior meeting was at the Field of Dreams Pavilion. Uh, it was extremely hot and buggy. Those spotter lantern flies were landing all over everyone. Oh, uh, we had a speaker from the Friends of Burlington County. Uh, they talked about their 5K run that they're having for the shelter, uh, Friends of Burlington County Animal Shelter, actually. And they talked about volunteers that they need and some of the other items that they could use. And uh, she was very informative. Actually, the uh, woman who attended was the woman who came to a township committee meeting a couple of years ago regarding the uh, trap neuter return program. She did remember me. Um, there's more. Okay. Oh, I attended the yard sale and uh, I was going around town. Uh, people were bustling all over the place. It was really, it seemed like people were doing pretty good. And I enjoyed my breakfast sandwich from those scouts and Hoagie from the fire department. Um, I also attended the Welcome Home Hero for Sergeant First Class David Albright, who was, it was a surprise event. He was here visiting family at um, Sandy Welsh's house. Uh, his wife is Kyleen, uh, Kyleen. Welsh. Uh, so we welcomed them home, the uh, Warriors, Watch Riders, the Operation Yellow Ribbon, and some other, mo uh, other motorcycle groups were there. And he was overwhelmed. Uh, it, it was just such a surprise. Uh, we met at the firehouse and our police directed us. Uh, uh, Jesse, I saw Jesse there too. Um, it, it was an incredible thing. He's um, been in the service for 13 years and right now they're going to be moving on to uh, Texas. He's going to be stationed there for a while and doing some tours um, in Korea. So uh, it was so nice to, to be able to be a part of that. And I think that does my report. Um, I don't know, Phil, did I miss anything from Rec? I think Phil's there. I do see I, John, but maybe I see his I see his number. And how about you, Matt? Did I miss anything from Dysa? No, you pretty much uh, captured it accurately. Thanks, Kate. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Uh, Ms. Holland. 
Um, so since our last meeting, the library board met, uh, began, began to discuss budgets for 2022. Um, they're still doing a lot of their programs virtually um, and they're looking to fill a few board positions. So um, if anyone is interested, uh, keep an eye out. There'll be mailers for fundraising and for, um, for recruitment. Um, I did speak with the superintendent looking to address some of the issues that they're still having with communication and follow through, um, you know, with the cones with uh, being made aware of uh, contractors coming in and um, promises to do better. And then uh, reminders that they're going through a lot. They're dealing with a lot of other issues. So um, be patient. Um, I unfortunately missed getting a hoagie from the firehouse, but satisfied the craving with blues. So not as good, but very good. Um, I am uh, looking at October 24th um, for a potential town cleanup. I know the, the official town cleanup for shredding and uh, disposing of TVs and whatnot is the week weekend before, but the Women's Club annual 5K is uh, scheduled for October 30th. So I was thinking of, of another opportunity to pick up litter, um, especially uh, reminded by that plea for citizens to clean up the, uh, okay. the, the basketball court. Um, it's something that we need to keep on top of quarterly, monthly, whatever. Um, but October 24th, and this time I'll spread the word better and ask for uh, that to go on the website, the, the signs as soon as I nail down the date for sure um, and reach out to uh, Mr. Fenimore to actually use the Clean Communities Grant. He keeps reminding me exists. Um, uh, as for that trap neuter re release program, um, I'm currently assisting with that at work. So if anyone is in the market for kittens, um, there's no shortage of them. And I'm doing that uh, sporadically as I have time and bandwidth to do so. Um, that looks like all I've got. I, I was gonna ask about uh, if there's a list circulating for the cannabis committee, but I do see that that's later on in the discussion points, just so we know who to reach out to and start scheduling meetings. So, okay. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allett. I had the opportunity, uh, Mr. Fenimore had called me when he was doing the uh, cleanup at West Ave with the uh, mulching of the leaves and uh, vegetation up there. Uh, he had this, uh, to me, it almost looks like a dinosaur, but uh, the tool that he has uh, uses the front end bucket to pick up the leaves that have already uh, decomposed and have, uh, are into the mulch uh, phase and dumps it in. And then it cleans out uh, rubbish that is mixed in with the leaves. Uh, there were stones, there was uh, some sticks, there's uh, plastic bottles, uh, some aluminum cans. The amount of trash that they pick up when they pick up the leaves, it gets sucked in and then just end up in, into our compost piles uh, was amazing. I took some pictures and I'll uh, get them printed and shared with the committee. But uh, it was quite a process that he's going through. Uh, and spent at least a week up there, what I know of, uh, again, using uh, this tool to uh, clean the mulch and then it's clean and uh, it gets hauled off to, uh, I believe, a farmer and uh, there's another company that he deals with uh, in uh, getting that whole West Ave area, uh, the compost uh, lot or acreage up there cleaned up so that here we are in the fall again, and you can start putting more piles of leaves and out there. And uh, it's a really a joint venture with uh, helping some of our neighbor communities who bring their leaves to the compost uh, site. Uh, so it's it's quite a quite a process. Uh, it's not just putting the leaves there, but through the course of the year, he's got to go up there and he's got to turn those leaves over. Uh, to help the mulching process. So, uh, I was able to do that, uh, which was 
real impressive is you know you look at it and yeah it's it's a it's a tool or it's a contraption but when you understand how the process and the work that goes into uh, the composting and it, getting it clean so that it can be reused uh, for farmland uh, and putting it back into the soil. Uh, the other thing I had gotten involved with uh, was on Third Street. Uh, I had gotten a call about uh, an issue up there and uh, that's where I guess we got involved with the trees that uh, with the roots that uh, I guess it gotten damaged or disturbed uh, in the construction process of putting new curbs in uh, and then reaching out to uh, Mayor Templeton and then uh, to John Brown uh, to try and get the issue resolved. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that things, uh, even though things didn't uh, work out for saving those three trees up there, that uh, future trees uh, may be salvaged and uh, protected as uh, other roadways get done here in town. Uh, and I was able to get a breakfast sandwich from the Scouts on Saturday and uh, hoagies from uh, the fire company. Uh, I'm not sure what, why they didn't run out of hoagies uh, around lunchtime or one o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, later that day, uh, they were driving around town uh, peddling uh, hoagies that they had not been able to sell earlier in the day. So I got uh, another treat of another hoagie later in the day. So I had my share of uh, the hoagies from the fire company. Uh, something that uh, Rec may wanna take into consideration next year or when we go to do the town-wide yard sale next year is uh, Riverside had their community day on Saturday uh, and uh, you know we had our yard sale. I'm not sure if that deterred some of the folks from coming over because uh, Riverside's uh, residents were occupied with the things that they were doing over there in Riverside. Uh, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to, to touch on a couple high points, uh, uh, as we talked about uh, for the first uh, 45 minutes or so tonight, the 130 plan, uh, spent a lot of time on that, a lot of time uh, correspondence with uh, Mr. Stanley Kynes, uh, working with Mrs. Martin um, and the advisory committee and integrating all those changes and so forth and uh, uh, going back and redoing the original questionnaire that we had uh, 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 put together back in uh, December and January uh, earlier this year. So. Um, not exactly the, the, the clearest process. Uh, I, I made uh, probably three or four phone calls up to the point of contact up at the uh, uh, State uh, Office of Planning and Advocacy to answer questions and uh, uh, no one answers the phone and no one calls back when you leave messages. So uh, Mr. Stanley Kindness was getting all of my, uh, uh, all the phone calls rolling down, all my questions were heading back in his direction. but. Uh, Again, thanks to all that participated, Mrs. Martin and the advisory committee on that. Uh, one of the big things that we did, uh, you know, it, it, we picked it up back in the, in the springtime, looking at the, the data that Mr. Stanley Kynes had put together was uh, um, uh, construction progress in, in Delanco, the number of uh, housing units, uh, square footage of uh, warehousing and so forth seemed or was really in error, uh, really way off. And, uh, uh, was going back talking with uh, Air McFadden and construction, looking at uh, other records and so forth. And it was obviously, um, and, and the data source was uh, Department of Community Affairs. And what we found out was that uh, somewhere between input on our end and getting DCA's reception on the other end, uh, um, a lot of data is not being entered and DCA uh, it, it's either uh, several years behind, and the other thing is that we saw is that uh, this affects uh, uh, probably half of the, the communities in this uh, uh, regional plan endorsement. Uh, uh, there was a lot of undercounting as far as uh, uh, residential and then commercial industrial uh, uh, reports that uh, DCA really is not in, not showing for us. So. 
hopefully that's uh, you know that's why you do these things and that's why you, you come through it and start questioning some of the data and uh, getting a ground truth on what's really there. Um, had a meeting uh, 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 once again in the saga of the uh, the seawalls down at the uh, uh, the Zerberg waterfront. Uh, 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 last July, I sent uh, a letter email up to uh, uh, Assistant Commissioner Vince Mazai, who's uh, Assistant Commissioner of uh, Watershed and Land uh, Land Management at uh, DEP, and uh, uh, he agreed to come down here again. Uh, he came down here about a year ago, October, and met one on one with Mr. Fox and Mr. Mazai, Commissioner Mazai uh, wholeheartedly agreed that the seawall at the original location at the Zerberg waterfront was needed. Uh, somehow in the um, uh, follow-up at DEP, uh, that uh, his, his on-site evaluation was, uh, was uh, overruled um, by uh, uh, his staff. And uh, anyway, uh, that occurred last early last spring back in uh, March. Anyway, I sent uh, this letter in, in July. Mr. Mazai agreed to come back down here and bring uh, some other officials of DEP with them. So they had their, uh, their field trip Friday down here. And uh, uh, Mrs. Lohr, Mr. Schwab, Mr. Fox, Dan Martin, uh, Chris Knoll from ERI Engineering uh, were all there and uh, spent about two and a half hours walking the site. Uh, it was low tide. Uh, I had gone and marked out the corners of uh, where the old uh, foundation was, uh, better visibility. Um, so any of the outcome is uh, we're hopeful uh, once again, and uh, uh, that uh, uh, seeing it for, for uh, by others at DEP, they realized that uh, uh, their rules don't exactly fit the situation we have here. And as they said, me, said to us, uh, their job is to, uh, Make something happen here, you know, in a good way. So, uh, uh, Chief of Staff uh, Jennifer Dejan uh, from uh, Senator Singles Singleton staff was on uh, at the meeting as well, and uh, uh, he's applying pressure to the DEP commissioner to get things moving on this. So, um, we're hopeful. Hopefully, uh, next week, uh, Mr. Fox may have uh, uh, some additional information on this. But uh, anyway. That's um, that's all I have on there. So we'll continue on. Mayor, if I can just add uh, something that when we were walking the site, uh, the trees where the water has uh, eroded the uh, the soil away from the roots, uh, and as it continues, we could end up losing those trees that are real close to the water line now, uh, but also probably about ten or fifteen feet from the bank. Uh, the soil is starting to erode uh, away from those trees. Uh, and I pointed that out to the uh, assistant commissioner that, you know, we're gonna lose these trees. We're also gonna lose those other trees. And as uh, the water continues, you know, we'll end up losing the sidewalks and probably being up to the street. Uh, and again, it, it, was, uh, it was great that they came down and they took the field trip to actually see uh, and be able to touch uh, and feel and walk around and, and see the issue that we're dealing with. So, thank you. And just to add, uh, I had contacted uh, Mr. Cherkis at uh, Grapevine Development a couple of days prior. Uh, he was unable to attend, but uh, Mr. Walker, the uh, on site property manager of the Zerber uh, building, uh, uh, did come over and uh, added some really good points uh, of some of the issues uh, groundwater, flooding. Uh, that they're experiencing in the, in the lower levels of the, uh, the mansion and uh, uh, probably attributable to the, uh, uh, the broken down and destroyed, you know, the destroyed seawall out front. So uh, we managed, I think, to tie it all together that it's, it's a huge regional asset, uh, uh, the community, recreation, the carriage rides, uh, prom pictures, wedding pictures. Uh, I had a civil wedding ceremony that afternoon the historic uh, Zerberg Mansion, the beautiful river view, you know, the Heritage Trail goes right up the street. I mean, we think we bundled it all together and said, if there isn't a project, you know, isn't something that's worth uh, doing this for, then what is? So uh, again, we're hopeful. We've, we've, we've 
we've been hopeful before over the last 12 years of uh, 13 years of dealing with DEP on this, uh, what should, should be a simple answer. Uh, Mrs. Laurie, you were there. Any, any additional comments on that? No, thank you, Mayor. I think that you uh, and Fern captured um, the meeting and um, highlighted the important aspects uh, that were related to the DEP. Uh, I think, all right, on with the show. Consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are continued to be routine, enacted with a single motion, and the item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there anything here anyone wants, uh, has a question on or wants to be considered separately? All right, resolution 2021-120, authorizing execution of agreement with Dolan Contractors Incorporated. Resolution 121, uh, resolution certifying liens against certain properties for costs incurred by the township in accordance with chapter 135 of the township code. Approval of uh, department reports, approval of the consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Um, second. So moved by Mr. Brown, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Alat? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. Uh, meeting's now open to the public for comments and questions. Session two, as always, uh, state your name and address, and the chat function will be open now. Yep. Chat function is, an, is enabled. Also, if uh, you would like to uh, state your name and address uh, for your comment and question at this time or utilize the chat function. Anything coming in? No, there's nothing in the chat function at this time. All right, very good. Seeing nothing uh, entered in the chat functions, question and comments, comment uh, section of this meeting is now closed to the public. Status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 executive orders. Uh, I haven't seen anything come out recently in review of the current COVID response policies for municipal facilities. Anything for you, Mrs. Lohr? on this? No, the only uh, update on guidelines are uh, some executive orders regarding masks, uh, but they have to do with more with school and childcare facilities. Uh, okay. Our policy for the municipal building and other uh, indoor municipal facilities is still in place that um, masks are to be worn. Okay. Yeah, I forwarded the county, uh, uh, the COVID counts, uh, it was a uh, five day uh, uh, table that I think I emailed out uh, or forwarded about an hour before the meeting started tonight. Uh, last five days, uh, COVID positives in the county, 43, 67, 89, 85, and 70. And uh, uh, the one figure, uh, uh, well, it looked like uh, I think since co since the county since the county tabulation began back in uh, March of last year, uh, some 400 residents of Delanco have tested positive for uh, COVID. That's over that you know that whole period from uh, September of this year to uh, back in March of last uh, 2020. Uh, some 400 residents and neighbors in our town so have tested positive. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Lord. Uh, yes. The first thing is I just want to rem uh, remind Township Committee that the New Jersey League of Municipalities um, is reminding us that they are having their annual uh, League of Municipalities convention in Atlantic City this November from November 16th through the 18th. It's three days. And right now they are still running it in person. And right now the advanced registration uh, is available um, or you can register on site. It is uh, slightly more uh, uh, for on site registration, but I'll send an email out. But if anybody's interested in attending the in person League of Municipalities Convention, November 16th, 17th, and or 18th, um, you can either shoot me an email or respond to the email when I send that out. So we can get you uh, 
uh, registered. And the other piece of correspondence that I have is that uh, from the Burlington County uh, Community Development Office regarding our community development block grant for installation of ADA compliant handicap ramps and sidewalk replacements at uh, three locations along Cooper, uh, Cooper and Hickory, Laurel and Pennsylvania. We received our sub grantee agreements back and the cover letter with the uh, nod and okay to go ahead and uh, be able to bid those out, bid that project out. The, this was forwarded to the uh, township engineer, to Harry Fox, um, and that the, um, we have to submit our completed project paperwork uh, by September 30th, 2022. So, uh, and that's all the correspondence that I have at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Discussion items, proposed ordinance amending Township Code of Chapter 216 governing park regulations to clarify provisions on passive public parks. Uh, I briefly mentioned this uh, earlier during our discussion on the 130 plan and uh, uh, decided to put this on for discussion uh, and with the intent that uh, if uh, after our review we could have it uh, on for an, uh, an ordinance reading first reading uh, next week uh, when Mr. Heinbold is in attendance for any clarification or questions that you may have. Uh, Anybody have any comments on that uh, right now with the uh, what's in the agenda packet? Uh, Mrs. Fern, so the term uh, will go from park regulations to public regulations. Is that yeah, we discussed that. I thought we discussed that at the last meeting. Uh, I just want a clarification. It's just asking a question. It's basically changing the park uh, to uh, public property. Public property. Yeah, throughout the uh, 216. Can I ask, just to satisfy my curiosity, what prompted the language for no raw meat, fish, poultry, being in a public park, unless it's grill ready. Like what, what went down? I, I, okay. <laughs> you, 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 you want to investigate that one? You have to ask Doug that. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> In the in the ordinance, it it where the changes are, they are uh, either red, not redacted, but uh, cross outs, and okay. new additions are underlined. So if it's not crossed out or underlined, then it's our it's existing, mm -hmm. and who knows why <laughs> that was you know in there. What section was that in, Christine? It's uh, restricted, restricted uses for W, W7. Paragraph eight, or excuse me, paragraph seven, seven under W. Yeah, no, I, I realize that's old, old oh, language. It just made me laugh and kind yeah. of curious. Well, yeah, if it's like I said, if it's, yeah, it's not already, it's been in there for years and years. Yeah, and just wondering if people were bringing like chickens to be plucked there and then it appalled people so now it's an ordinance so yeah so this is a the, the ordinance that is in your packet it is the entire co uh, section the chapter so you're going to see you know um language that's been in there for years and years it's just that what's either uh been crossed out or underlined is either uh is what's new or being taken out or added so that raw meat uh poultry whatever has probably dated back well into the 40s and 50s, probably. Well, the I mean, one before that, what is, what is an alms, solicit alms or contribute for yeah, any alms. purposes? What's an alms? Um, they used to say like alms for the poor, donation. You know, we would sit with your cup okay. and, and ask for money. <laughs> it's from Scrooge. 
it's a lot of this slang <laughs> is very old. We have a lot of that throughout our code. Well, so we, if you're changing it, if you're paying to change it, might as well delete it. Like, let's let them bring roll meat in. <laughs> so you what can, we're uh, trying to accomplish with, with this is that by changing or it says Township Park to public property, if you look back at the where the definitions of the street end areas, they were not included in some of the uh, in most of the regulations. So there it, things were not enforceable at the street end. So this change in the language to public property makes uh, certain prohibitions that we would have in the parks also prohibited at the street ends. Yeah, but if there's, you know, something, you know, you want to take raw meat into the park, you know, and you want to change that, maybe you can, you know, you know suggest that, you know, send your suggestions to Mrs. Lohr and, and she'll bundle them all up and send them on to uh, Mr. Heinhold. Uh, uh, well, you know, all joking aside, do we allow grilling in any of our public properties? I know the county has grills at, but do we allow it? Do we have grills anywhere? We don't have any facilities for it. No. I don't know. Is there are there grills out at the FOD? No, I, I don't think so. I think our our gym yeah. advised not to provide for yeah. grills. Yeah. No grills. Yeah. It's so the language may be obsolete. Yeah. So, any other? If there are comments, uh, you know, send send them into the Janice, and she can mm -hmm. bundle and send them to Doug, and maybe we do a little cleanup on on some other things there, but. Uh, Try to avoid getting bogged down here. All right, uh, item two, appointments for the Cannabis Subcommittee. Uh, back in, I think, June, we created the resolution uh, by resolution 112, creating Cannabis Subcommittee. Uh, it's got two members from the Township Committee, two members from the Planning Board, and up to five at large. And I think from the last list that I've got, uh, from the township committee, we got uh, um, Ms. Holland and Ms. Fitzpatrick, correct? That's correct. All right, and from the planning board, I believe we've got uh, Mr. Tom Lord and Mr. Bill Matalevich. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. And so we're looking at five at large. And the last list that I have, uh, we have uh, uh, John Payet, Marilyn Entman, uh, Steve McLaughlin, Matt Bartlett, Liz Madison, uh, Heather Sparrow, and Joe Galfano. And five slots with- there, there's, there were two from Economic Advisory uh, Council, uh, Joe Chaska and uh, Christina from uh, Christina DeSanti. I guess without our secretary, she wasn't there. I guess it didn't get forwarded. That may have been my fault. So Who's we did discuss it. Christina DeSanti. All right. And Joe Chaska. Got it. One, two. To read those, uh, the five I, I got, I did get Matt, Liz, John, Marilyn, and I have Chris and Joe. But you, there were a couple other names you mentioned, Mike. Uh, Joe Gabano and Heather Sparrow. So there's 12 people on this committee. Well, as the ordinance is written, there's five at large. And so the question becomes, do we want to hold it at the... Uh, at that number, since we've got... Uh, so this is seven at large. If you just had two township committee and two joint land use and then five at large, there's seven at large here. Yep. Eight actually, uh, eight at I mean, large. Do you want to expand that? No, I mean you. You said five at large is what the ordinance says. You have eight at large. 
I know. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the names of the people that put their names in for the cannabis committee. Do you want to pick five from that or do you want to increase the change the uh, change the resolution creating the committee to a larger number? I don't know. What do you think, Christine? I, I think it's better smaller. I think that we're going to have a lot of trouble coordinating schedules and yeah, and it is. so I, I say keep it at five. Yeah, I, I agree. So. I'm not right. the committee, but uh, or the uh, cannabis committee or uh, from the township committee, but uh, I guess to get a wide spectrum, you know, uh, age wise, uh, so that they're not all, uh, I, I guess, seniors, but we get some of the younger folks in and get their opinion and uh, their involvement. Uh, because they're the future. So out of the names, just making sure that uh, we have a, a good mix of, uh, of folks. I don't see, um, I'm not sure about Heather Sparrow, but most of these people are older. Older. Yeah, there's a teacher uh, at the school, I believe. And how, so is she could be one of the younger ones. Can she say Steve McLaughlin's name? Yeah, he had, he had, no, they didn't. So that was, that's another one then. Steve, he had um, one of yeah, the names in from um, History Board. So, um, I think Christine and I are going to have to put our heads together and decide what we want to do. What do you think, Chris? Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. So, do you, is that what you're saying? You, do the co chairs make the selections, or, or as far as, or do you want, is this, are you picking names or are you deciding on whether you want five or more? Yeah, we're going to discuss it and we may pick the names. Okay. So, does everyone have the, the okay. Uh, John Paye, Marilyn Entman, uh, let's see, Steve McLaughlin, Matt Bartlett, Liz Mattisette, Heather Sparrow, Joe Gavano, Joe Chaska, and Christine DeSanti. Yes. Yep. It's 13 people all together. All right. I'm going to try and narrow it down to the nine folks. Is that my understanding? Yes. Okay. And I'd just like to point out, this is Kitty, that um, Bill Matalevich is also representing the Surge Authority. Okay. Uh, and I'll, 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 sorry, this is Steve McLaughlin here. I'll mention that I was, uh, the plan was for me to represent the school board as well. We talked about right. that at our meetings. And Steve's a younger person, so that's a good, uh, good to have. And Matt is younger. So, well, the important thing was, you know, the, the, the tasking that the resolution for this, this committee is that it's, it's, it's a, a fact finding and informational discovery and really look at uh, what the experience has been uh, as this moves forward in the state and looking at what's occurred in other states and other towns that have had uh, legalized cannabis uh, pros and cons. And so uh, this is really a fact finding group. So. Uh, the clock, uh, there's a report that sought uh, initial report four months after the first meeting of the subcommittee after, you know, after the committee is formed. So, uh, and then six months thereafter. Um, that sounds like a good solution. And let uh, the co-chairs sort it out and uh, come back uh, at the next meeting or so with uh, what you came up with. Does that sound fair? Mayor, just so that I know what to put on the next agenda, are you having appointments based on the co-chair's recommendations um, as the resolution provides that the cannabis subcommittee is appointed by the uh, township committee? Or are you, uh, are the co-chairs making the appointments outside of the township agenda? Just so that I know how to 
put this on the next agenda or or not if it needs doesn't need to be on the next agenda i think well paragraph c says five at large members to be appointed by the township committee i, th I think i think we would make the recommendations for the township committee to approve janice okay so Lisa you want to make the recommendations for the township committee okay. to approve. and and if the, if if there's any discussion and it comes out that um, you know, we're going to recommend that you expand the membership, then you just need a resolution to amend this, the resolution creating it, expanding the membership. Very okay. simple. Okay. All right, so the next agenda, I will have appointments to the um, uh, cannabis subcommittee. Okay. Okay. All right. Very Thank good. you so much. All right. And let's see. Uh, one last item, just, just, uh, the, the, the think uh, going forward, uh, let's see, our next meeting is next Monday, correct? Yeah, one week in between. Week. So next Monday, we have uh, another meeting, the fourth. Back to back meetings. And uh, if there's uh, Halloween's coming up and we still got a little bit of COVID running around. So if there's anything uh, that uh, the committee or any of the uh, uh, recreation or the police or anyone ha has some thoughts on what to do or not to do uh, for this year. Uh, maybe we'll discuss that at uh, next Monday's meeting. So any last thoughts or comments uh, for tonight? Go Eagles. <laughs> yeah, I, and I'd like to say, you know, even though Deeds and Watsons uh, didn't come back to Delanco, they have continued to support our um, DISA and uh, recreation and they're just, um, Terry's gonna pick up um, hot dogs for community day, like at least 600, I contacted Deets and Watson and they don't hesitate to uh, work with us on whatever we need. So I just think that should be mentioned. Thank you. And for the, uh, for the record, Mary, uh, the Township Committee does not need an executive session for this evening. Um, motion to adjourn then. Okay. So moved. Okay. Okay. Second. All in favor? Very good. Aye. 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 Out of here. Good night. Recording good night. stopped. Thank you, Aaron. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. Good, good night. night. Good night. Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too.